Welcome to the Love Your Marriage Podcast, hosted by Joseph and Crystal Gruber. We are here to awaken authentic Catholic culture through holy matrimony. And that begins with our marriage, and now yours. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Direct, O Lord, our actions by thy holy inspiration, and carry them on by thy gracious assistance, that every word and work of ours may begin in thee, and by thee be happily ended. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Welcome to the Love Your Marriage Podcast. I am Joseph Gruber, here to talk to you about this idea that your spouse is meant to be your friend. And I think it's worth taking a a moment to unpack what I mean by friendship. Some of you may be familiar with the idea that there are three different kinds of friendship that Aristotle in the Nicomachean Ethics outlines. Uh, Maybe you've come across Dr. John Cudabak's book, True Friendship, or Friendship, the Art of Happiness. I think it's gone through several different title variations over the years. Regardless, a wonderful book. Or maybe you've just heard talks on friendship before. So I don't want to belabor the point, but I do want to cover it quickly. So know that this is a quick thing, not the full expanded idea of what friendship is. But Aristotle talks about how there are basically three kinds of friendship based on what we love about the other person. Two of them are about what we love in so far as what we get out of the relationship. And one is that we are attracted to the character, the goodness of the other. So there's a friendship of usefulness. We are friends with people who are useful to us. So business partners, we are friendly toward. Uh, co-workers, uh, fellow students. Uh, th- these, these are people that we find useful to, to be friends with. So they derive some benefit from a relationship with us. We derive some benefit from a relationship with them. The relationship mostly just endures as long as there is mutual benefit. Uh, So if I go into a different business, if I start a new venture, my old business partner, I may not keep up with. If I leave my job and go to a new job, I may not keep up with those coworkers. If uh, we graduate from school, I may not keep up with most of the classmates because what in made the relationship endure was the useful relationship of uh, the the context at at hand. So that's one kind. Another kind of friendship of pleasure. I am friends with this person because of either the pleasant activity that we are engaged in or because I find them to be pleasant company. Maybe they're a great conversationalist. Maybe they love to listen to my stories Maybe they always laugh at my jokes or I always laugh at their jokes. It's pleasant to be with them. Maybe we ski together. That's usually the example my wife gives. Maybe we play board games together. Whatever it is, it's a pleasant thing. We watch movies together and then discuss the movies. It's a pleasant thing bringing us together. Pleasure is better than use because use is always for something else, but pleasure is something that you can do for its own sake. So that makes it just a better thing. Uh, but it's it's about whether or not I am pleased. So if I cease to be pleased or if they cease to be pleased, the relationship ends. So it doesn't endure any kind of sorrow or suffering. These are not the people we go to when times are hard, nor uh, do we go to a useful friendship when times are hard because we are not useful to them. We are not pleasant to them. So when times are hard, this usually separates the first two from the second, uh, from the, the, the second variety, the third technically the third variety. Um, But if you class both of the first two as one thing, as I'm in a relationship because of what I get out of it, the the other kind, the true friendship, second or third, depending on how you want to count, um, true friendship is because I admire this other person. I admire their virtue. I admire their, their goodness, and they see the same in me. Also, we are being drawn together because we are both attracted to the true and the good and the beautiful together. And because we are attracted to the true, the good, and the beautiful together, it's going to be enduring because it's based on a stable kind of character and it's based on enduring things. The transcendentals endure. Virtue is something that is meant to be a stable disposition. And so I'm going to love them best, not because of what I get out of it, but because I desire them to become even better. So my desire is for them to improve. All that to say, marriage is designed in the Catholic eyes as this kind of virtuous friendship. It is built into the vows. 
that you will be to get together through riches and to po- through poverty, through sickness and in health. That means that it's a relationship that can endure sorrow and suffering. And that kind of relationship depends on my being moved by the goodness of my spouse and my spouse being moved by the goodness that is me. That is what uh, a marriage is supposed to be. Many marriages, it ends up that they're actually being built around pleasure or that they're being built around use. And those are not a stable foundation for marriage. Why am I telling you all this? Well, to say something that might be a little counterintuitive, which is the the main point of this episode is just because our marriage is supposed to be a friendship of virtue, that does not mean that we shouldn't try at every opportunity that we can to be useful and pleasant to our spouse. So just because it's a marriage of uh, consisting of a virtuous friendship, which means that if if times do get bad, if we no longer are so pleasant or so useful that the, the bond will, will maintain. That doesn't mean that by and large, our efforts shouldn't be to be useful and pleasant to our spouse. So that doesn't mean uh, just because they're stuck with us doesn't mean we get a chance to be rude or grumpy all the time, that we're actually called to try to be pleasant and useful to our spouse, and they to us. We have less control over what they do and how they do it, but we have a surprising amount of control over what we do and how we do it. And so the the point of this episode, I know there was a long like prelude to get to this, and it is a counterintuitive switch. Uh, instead of talking about more how, oh, isn't it great that we can endure sorrow and suffering together? It is great. That's a wonderful thing. That is a, a beautiful thing about Catholic matrimony, the the sacrament of matrimony, is its enduring quality. But while it endures, ladies and gentlemen, dear listener, you may as well try to be as pleasant and useful to your spouse as you can. And cool thing about this, because it's a virtuous friendship, if they are not useful or pleasant to you, that doesn't get you out of the arrangement. You are still called to be as pleasant and useful as you can. So even if they are uh, lumps on a log, even if they are uh, um, more grumpy or bitter or distant, you're still married to them. And so there is still this, this chance, this opportunity to show your love for them, to show your affection for them, to show your desire for their good. Now, just because you're useful and pleasant to them doesn't mean that you're trying to just let them off the hook of becoming horrible people. Your your job is to encourage their growth in virtue, which can be an uncomfortable thing, which may require uncomfortable conversations. So not always use, uh, not always pleasant conversations, right? But outside of those in the day-to-day life of husband and wife in the home and out and about, it's worth asking the question, how can I be a little bit more useful and how can I be a little bit more pleasant to my spouse right now? There are all sorts of ancillary benefits to being more useful and uh, pleasant to one's spouse, one of which is they're going to respond to that hopefully over time and hopefully even reciprocate. But even if they don't, the coolest thing about learning to be more useful and pleasant to one's spouse is that it changes us. It changes us to become the men and women that we are called to be. When we can put somebody else's interests at least on par with our own, if not slightly ahead of our own, and we can work for their good, that changes our heart. Instead of being a self-focused and introspective and selfish sort of person, we have this opportunity to step outside of ourselves to our other self, our spouse, who is our other self, right? Like in Ephesians, when when St. Paul is talking about husbands loving their wives as they love their own body, that doesn't mean taking them for granted. That means making this sort of ecstatic, outside of self-stepping sort of move and saying, I choose to allow this person to be on par with me. I choose that their interests 
that their desires shall be something that I will also uh, take part in. Everything that is good in their heart, I want to affirm and I want to build upon. Everything that is evil going on, all of their twisted desires, I will see them as not really theirs, but defects for a time. And I will work and hope and pray for the good to continue building and for all that is off about them to fall away. Because our desire is to see our spouse in heaven, which means all that is evil, all that is perverted, all that is twisted up must be untwisted and reverted and and made right again, whether in this life or in purgatory. And from what I hear, purgatory is not a walk in the park. So this is the best time. This is the time to work for the salvation of the soul of your spouse and Nice side bonus is that uh, you yourself will become the saint that you're called to be by loving your spouse the best that you can. And I just want to humbly suggest trying to take time to be a little bit more pleasant and useful for your spouse. Now, pleasant, there might be a little bit of confusion uh, about that, but usually you, you sort of know these are the things they like. These are the things that they don't like. I, I, I can be a little bit more pleasant. I can change my intonation. I can, there, there are all sorts of things that you probably have a sense of. To be useful is usually like a two-parter. One part is asking, what is it you're working on and what do you need help on? And then the second part is helping. So sometimes I think I'm being useful to my spouse And instead, I'm just being useful to myself. I think, oh, I will clean this bathroom today. That will be useful to my spouse. And my spouse doesn't care about that. And so it was like, oh, I cared about that. I was trying to be useful to my spouse. Uh, No, I was trying to be useful to myself. I was trying to um, get away with just doing the things that I want to have done rather than actually asking what will be most helpful to you right now, today, this week, this month. What are things that I can be doing to help you? Because my desire is to help you. All right. So that's that's the episode. A couple of things at the end. If you're still listening, thank you. Uh, my request of you, my ask, is not only that you think about how to be useful and pleasant toward your spouse, um, for your good and for their good, but also would you take a moment to rate and review this either on Apple Podcast or on Spotify or on YouTube or wherever you're finding this to to let people know that this exists and that you have derived some benefit from it. Thank you in advance. I appreciate it very much. Um, This is a very small podcast. We would like it to grow because we would like to serve people. I admit sometimes my vanity gets pinged by these kinds of things, but in all sincerity of, of heart, we want to serve Catholic couples and you rating and reviewing, I think will help with that. If not, it it won't hurt to do it either way. Um, If you want to check out our website, ouroutpost.org slash events, we have a few things coming up that you might be interested in, especially if you're within driving distance of Jackson, Michigan, and we'll be putting up some online workshop details uh, that they might be already up by the time this episode is out. So, You can check that out. If you're a Catholic married man, I'll put a link in the show if you would like to grab 45 minutes with me. Um, I I think that would be a benefit to you, and it would certainly help me out as well. That's all I've got. Your life is worth living. Your marriage is worth loving. And your spouse, it wouldn't hurt to be a little bit more useful and a little more, more pleasant to them. They might appreciate it. Anyway, I know my wife does any time that I actually think, oh, I I could actually be pleasant in this interaction. Why don't I try for pleasant? She seems to like that. Anyway, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end, amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. This has been a production of Our Outpost, a ministry to awaken authentic Catholic culture through holy matrimony. Please like, share, subscribe, rate, and review if you found this helpful and encouraging. Find out more at OurOutpost.org.